We're back out here at the big lake once again, and today we're talking about when I have a chance to fish just a little bit deeper water, whether I'm on the boat or whether from the bank, and that water has some structure, some timber, some slop to it, that's when I reach for one of these guys. That's right, today we're talking all about square bills and how they can be super effective in the summertime. Stick around, you don't want to miss this one. I'm gonna change out to that square bill. I've got a pretty good, I've got an idea, it's probably a little bit too shallow here for this, a little bit too vegetated, but I still want to try it. Look at that old square bill crankbait. It's got some good pull to it as well. Oh, there we go, I got him. All right, on the square bill. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations! If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to low brow fishing. And if there's one constant that we can count on, that is conditions will change. You can ask any angler and every single time you go out to the lake, we have to be prepared for something to be different. You know, even if you look at the weather report and you're sure you're going to get clear skies with no wind. Well, you get out there and it's overcast and winds are blowing all around 10, 15 miles an hour. That is common and we need to be prepared for that. So we have to adjust our fishing accordingly. Now, whenever the weather's cloudy, whenever we've got a lot more wind, there's a couple of different ways we can attack that. You know, you can get your spinner baits out or you can get out your boot tail, paddle tail swim baits. Those are both great ways to do that. However, a lot of times it gives me a chance to attack a little bit deeper water. But as with anything in the, you know, big lake, as we've talked about several times before, whenever it comes to the big lake, no matter how deep it is, you will always be dealing with that vegetation. There is always some sort of vegetation or structure or something in these waters. Very rarely are you going to find some slick, smooth, hard bottom. And that's where something like this comes into play, you know, a square bill crankbait. Now, this right here, this is a Berkeley square bull, and these get down to about seven or eight feet. It's a great little crankbait. You know, you can hear it. It's got the rattles and it's got a knocker in it, makes a lot of noise, has a very wide wobble in the water, and it comes through slop and timber very, very well. You know, a lot of times we get nervous, right? I mean, I used to get very nervous. As a matter of fact, I still do when it comes to throwing a bait that can cost you seven, eight, nine dollars or more right in to some of the gnarly stuff and having faith that it's going to come back to you. Most of the time it will. Sometimes we do hang up, but these were actually made to go through the nasty stuff. When it's swimming under the water, it's kind of like this, going like that. And that bill, while it does make it have depth, it also acts as a shield to protect those hooks. You get hung up on a branch and it'll pop right over. You get caught up in some hydrilla or some milfoil, you give it a yank and it'll pop right out. And a lot of times, whenever you're doing that, you hear anglers say, well, when you give it that yank, that's when you get that reaction strike. And it is so true because you'll have a bass sitting right there and they'll see that sudden quick movement and boom, the bass is on top of it because that is how they are programmed to react. So on a cloudy day, on a little bit more windy day, this is kind of going to be what I'm going to be going after. Now, I'm not talking heavy overcast with rain in the forecast or blistering winds or anything like that. But with a good breeze, a little bit of chop on the water, some cloud cover in the sky, I am going to be going out into a little bit deeper water because with some cloud cover, that's going to give those fish a little bit of relief and they are going to spread out and roam a little bit more. And I can use these to cover water. You got to remember, 
I don't have any electronics on that little boat, so I have to use any means necessary to try to find those bass. And one of my secret weapons to do that is to cover water with a square bill or similar type of crankbait or a chatterbait. But when it comes to specifically fishing sparse timber, um, sparse vegetation, things like that, where it's not super, super thick, where it's not really choked, but we're at about eight to 10 feet of water and you've got a good mat of, of sporadic vegetation. It's got some gaps in between. That's where I'm going to be fishing something like this. And inside a place like that, I will be looking for depth changes, right? I will be looking for a submerged creek channel. And if I can find something like a bluff wall or a deep fall off that leads right to a vegetation edge, right? Or that's got, you know, a piece of timber or brush that's hanging out over access to deep water, that is a great place to target with a square bill. I can cast it out to the bank and I can bring it back to me. You know, I work back to front with a square bill as opposed to working the deeper end up toward the shore, which is normally how I would work with a jig or a chatterbait or something like this. With this, I'm going to be working shallow back to me deep, or I'm going to be making parallel casts along the bank bringing it back to me, trying to stay in that same depth and maximizing my time in the strike zone. Because as we've said before, those fish have got a really small strike zone in the summertime. And anything we can do to get them to expand that, including by generating a reaction strike, whether you get it right by their head, you know, if you can get them to chase your bait, well, that's all even the better. But most of the time, you're going to have to either get it real slow to get them to follow it to grab interest, or you're going to have to jerk it right by their head to get that sudden twitch, to get that sudden really fast reaction bite. There we go, I got him. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. Oh, it's not a dink. <laughs> he hit it like <laughs> he hit it like he he hit it like it owed him money. Now when I got to the lake today, I made the conscious decision I was going to try to fish in that 7 to 10 to 12 foot range. That we had a little bit of overcast sky, we had a little bit of you know, good breeze on the water, about five to 10 mile an hour, had a little bit of chop. And I was going to go out there and attack that part of the water column. I felt that's where those bass were going to be spread out to. So this was the first thing I had tied on. Again, this is that Berkeley square bowl. It gets down about seven or eight feet, depending on the line and how you work it. I thought that would be perfect for what I'm trying to do. And you can see it's got that sunfish color, which as we've talked about lately, if you've watched my last few videos, that that is what these bass in this lake are keying off on right now. They're not busting on shad, they're not busting on shiner, they're busting on sunfish. So this was the, this was a no-brainer. This is what I was gonna have tied on. And you know, it didn't take long. I had a couple little bites, had a couple little blow-ups, but I was not catching anything of real size. And I knew I could do better. I knew this wasn't the 100% you know, puzzle. This wasn't um, everything that I wanted it to be. I knew I could do better. So what I did was, is I traded that out and I went to this. This is a KVD 4.5 um, by Strike King and it's a little bit bigger, but if you notice, it doesn't have any rattles. It is a silent running uh, square bill. And I went with this because, well, we've got some pressure out here today. We've got a lot of pressure out here today. There's boats on top of each other. So I thought maybe if I went a little bit more stealthy, maybe I could get a little bit better result. And I did, and it didn't really take long for that to happen. So with a couple of nice fish in my back pocket, I realized that we were starting to get on a pretty good pattern. Today was going to be a good square bill day. All right, when it comes to gear, how am I fishing these things? Well, I was fishing them two different ways today, and that is, you know, lighter and heavier. When it came to doing a lighter presentation, I had them on this. This is 
you know, this is the same ride you guys have seen me use a million times. This is seven foot, medium heavy. It's got a little bit faster tip. This is a, a smaller Booyah square bill. Again, this is one of those more quiet ones. It doesn't really make a lot of noise, which, you know, when the pressured water, that worked really well, especially with the cloud cover that we had. You know, I kind of switched to something, had a little bit brighter color, something showed up a little bit better under the water. I've got 12 pound fluorocarbon on here. And like I said, this, this is what I was working with this one. Um, this is what I had for the heavier ones. And I've got a Guggen banger on here. And this is the grande size. This gets down to three to seven feet. And again, when that cloud cover kind of rolled in, things got a little bit darker. I switched to a little bit brighter, you know, a little bit brighter presentation because I was trying to get deeper in that water. And I wanted to make sure that this was visible whenever I was ripping it by those fish. I wanted to make sure that whenever, it, you know, got by their head that they saw this, that it was grabbing their attention. It was very aggressive. That's how I was fishing these. Very, very aggressive. This is 20 pound fluorocarbon. Sometimes I'll do 17 pound fluorocarbon. This is a 7.3 Cellus heavy rod with a faster action tip. And you know, this is just basically how I was doing it. So let's get out on the water and I'll show you the retrieves about how I was working it. All right, now we are in probably about six feet of water here. We're going to go ahead and cast it out. We want to get a good long cast on that square bill. And then we want to crank it. And then just kill it. And then just crank it. And then just kill it. Cast it out there as far as you can. The farther you cast it, the uh, deeper you can get it. And that's kind of what I'm doing, just crank and pause. You know, that's one of the most effective ways I can think of to do a square bill. Burn it down, and then stop it, and then, and then stop it. If there's any fish in the area, you will you will certainly get their attention. And that's what I'm doing. That's my, that's how I'm retrieving it. Just, and then just stop it. And then just stop it. Another way you can do it is just to cast it out there like that. And then just kind of fast, but not super fast. And then just kind of slow it down. Slow it down. Keep it nice and slow. And then speed it back up. And then slow it back down. You are trying to find different ways to mimic a panicked or injured bait fish. That's what you're trying to do. You know, give it a few cranks and then kill it. You don't just want to do a straight retrieve. That's the last thing you want to do. And then nice and slow. And then speed it back up. And then nice and slow. And then speed it back up. But don't be predictable with it. Do it at different intervals, different ways. Boy, there's so much boat traffic out here today. Okay, now another way you can do this, and this is kind of a super sneaky way, especially if that water's pressured, you cast it out there, and then you crank it down. And then you sweep your rod, and then you wind it back in and then you sweep your rod, and then you wind it back in. Now the trick is, is you don't want any slack to develop in your line. Because if you do, that bait is going to want to rise. So, because square bills, by and large, float. But that's another, you know, super sneaky way. Especially when the fish are pressured. It is a less um, aggressive presentation. But you can still generate quite a few 
three action strikes that way. So twist with your body and sweep. But you don't want any slack to develop in your line. You see how my line is still, still staying taut? That's where having a good gear ratio reel, this is a 7.5 to 1, uh, that's where a good gear ratio reel will help you. You know, you can stay in front of that and you won't have to worry about having to catch up to your bait. Crank it down to where you want, sweep your rod, reel out, sweep your rod. Like I said, you kind of still want to be pulling with your hand because you don't want any slack to develop in your line. And this is a great retrieve for when those fish are really super pressured. Whenever you want to sew them something a little bit different. This is kind of what I, you know, this is a great way, especially, you know, I know guys up north, they, a lot of times with uh, their silent cranks, they will do this and it can generate a lot of strikes. So there you have it. I invite you to try some of these techniques and retrieves when it comes to working with a square bill. I'm telling you, in the summertime especially, on pressured bodies of water, they are money. And if you're working from the bank, well, you can use a pier or maybe you have access to a little bit deeper water. I'm telling you, even for a bank angler, these will work just as well. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.